All right, welcome back to Getting Sober, dot, dot, dot. Again, my name is Jay, and today it's my birthday. If you haven't yet, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to leave us a comment in the comment section down below. I especially love hearing from you and especially on my birthday. All right, that's the last time I'm gonna say that. Probably not, but let's get started with today's episode. So technically, it was yesterday. My birthday was yesterday. And um, really the only reason why I'm bringing it up, I'm not the type of person that likes that kind of attention, um, which I know sounds weird because I'm hosting a YouTube channel. But why we're talking about uh, sober birthdays today is because there's going to have to be a first time for everything. There's going to have to be a first sober birthday. There's going to have to be a first sober Christmas, which is this weekend. There's going to have to be a first sober New Year's Eve and a first sober non-hungover New Year's Day and so on and so forth. And the reason why I, uh, one of the reasons why I chose to get sober when I did, which was October 30th of 2020, was because I knew myself to know that in addition to naming the channel getting sober dot 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 again, that I would try to get sober and then I would fail and then I would have to find myself getting sober dot 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 again. And I knew this about myself and when we know more truths about ourselves, it makes the path ahead a little bit easier and maybe a little bit more predictable. But sometimes we maybe don't want to feel predictable. Sometimes we don't want to feel like everybody can predict who we are and what we're going to do next, especially me. And because I knew that I had gone back to drinking so many times, I wanted to take the edge off of this new territory of sobriety because all I had ever known was to drink. All I had ever known on birthdays was to get absolutely trashed, to get annihilated, to get drunk beyond all repair. Year after year, as soon as I turned 21, I had spent almost every single birthday exclusively drunk and then probably the next day, and then probably the next day after that. But this year is now my third consecutive year of being sober. So going back to uh, my current sober streak sobriety date of October 30th, 2020, is that uh, I wanted to give myself a head start. And now we know that New Year's resolutions are right around the corner. Our last episode, which I'll put a link to at the end of this video, um, our last episode talked about using this month as practice for your New Year's resolution because we talk about the three P's or the four P's of sobriety. The first P being preparation, the second one being practice, the third one being patience, and the last one being persistence. Now, when it comes to preparation, I knew that I might go back to drinking. I knew that if I gave myself enough of a head start, well before my birthday, which is December 20th, starting on October 30th, that would give me all of the month of November to work out the kinks, to get it right. And still, if I had a detour or a relapse, that I would still be in pretty good shape to meet my goal of being sober on my birthday. And sometimes we are our own biggest obstacle to achieving our goals. Sometimes we get in the way of our own blessings. And sometimes when we have no better tools at our disposal, we do what? We self-sabotage. Instead of working through the emotions, instead of working things out with our friends, with our family members, with our coworkers, we just bottle it up, stuff it deep down inside, never to hopefully return, and we drown it with beer after beer, bottle after bottle, and hope that the pain will disappear, never to return. But of course, because we never solved the problem in the first place, because we never dealt with that pain, with that trauma, with that emotion, the pain's still there, the trauma's still there, the problem still lay unresolved. And I know that for a lot of us, myself included, I didn't really want to tackle all of these feelings and all these repressed memories head on because if they were painful in the first place, then they're probably still going to be painful now. However, when you experienced what you experienced, you were younger and less experienced than you are now. So you have to know that 
the version that you are now and the version that you are going to be moving forward is not going to be one that's going to be less capable of handling whatever it was that was bothering you in the first place. And on the topic of New Year's resolutions, when we say new year, new me, the only difference between wishful thinking and reality or this new reality that you're hoping for and wish to have for yourself is effort. The only difference between wishful thinking and this new reality is effort. Sometimes we get wrapped up in thinking that what we're supposed to be doing is what everybody else is doing. Having that herd mentality, experiencing the fear of missing out because what everybody else is doing is what you used to do. And because you associate those things and those people and those places with fun, you feel like sometimes I can't have fun anymore. Think about when you were a kid and all of the fun that you had. There was no, there was nothing stopping you from having the most fun when you were a child. And then all of a sudden the world told you that you needed to buy this, you needed to wear that, you needed to go to these places, you needed to drink this, eat that, dress a certain way, celebrate a certain way. And then all of a sudden your interpretation of the world around you and what you thought fun was became skewed. It became somebody else's standards. And when we get sober, one of the beautiful things that happens for us and to us is it allows us to start thinking more for ourselves. It starts to allow us to listen to our body. Like, for example, instead of going out at nine o'clock, maybe starting to prepare to go to bed at nine o'clock so we can have a bright and early morning and we can really start to tackle the next day and feel like we are in control of our daily existence. I know that when I was burning the candle at both ends, so to speak, that I was going to bed drunk and I was waking up hungover. And all of the time in between, I was spending half of that time just trying to recover. So I made a stand and I made a deal with myself. And that deal was I wasn't going to spend another birthday drunk, that I wasn't going to spend any more first days of my next birth year hungover. And with all of the time that I have and with all of the abilities that I'm able to tap into by just feeling well, I've been able to cross off much more on my to-do list, feel much more productive and lay my head down each night knowing that I've done everything that I possibly can to feel like I've earned my sleep. Sometimes we let our self-worth dictate our emotions. And in turn, that makes us want to feel celebrated or thought about or cared about or loved externally. And of course, it's nice when other people show us that they care about us, that they're thinking about us, that they miss us. But whatever happens to showing yourself that you care about yourself, that you miss the old you, the old you that didn't need alcohol to have fun, to go on an adventure, to use your imagination, to believe that the sky was the limit and you could be anything that you wanted to be in this life. I bet that if you asked that five-year-old version of yourself what they wanted to be when they grew up, the answer wouldn't be drunk or hungover. And now when I say that I'm healthier and I'm happier than I've ever been, I also too want to clarify that because I want to keep this channel as real as possible. Sobriety doesn't give you an endless amount of energy. Sobriety initially in the beginning doesn't really fix your sleep. For some of you, it does. Sobriety isn't going to fix your credit score overnight. It's not going to fix the relationship with your friends and your family members overnight, but it is going to give you the ability to start really focusing on what's most important. It's going to start allowing you the ability to get the rest that you deserve and accomplish more of the things that you want to do and start to really materialize this future that you believe that you're worth having and that you always thought that you could have, but the only thing that was standing in your way of achieving that was yourself or your drunk self. And think about this. Why is it that on your birthday, you choose to celebrate by poisoning yourself? <laughs> Who would you choose to poison on their birthday? Your worst enemy or your best friend? So the difference is stop treating yourself like your worst enemy and start treating yourself like your best friend. And I imagine that the universe will start to reward you and show you what you've been missing out on. One of my favorite analogies with drinking is the birth cake analogy. And since this is a birthday episode, I'm going to go ahead and go over the birthday cake analogy. And since this birth 
And since this episode is about birthdays, I want to share with <laughs> And since this episode is about birthdays, I want to share with you the birthday cake analogy. Now, the birthday cake analogy is fun and it's simple and it'll give you a new way of looking at your current or previous alcohol use. So, here we go. So, the birthday cake analogy is simple. When would you normally have birthday cake? On your birthday or maybe on your friend's or your partner's birthday, or maybe somebody at the office. But really, how many times a year would you normally have birthday cake? Once, twice, three times, maybe four times a year, you'd have birthday cake. Now let's pause. Why would you have birthday cake? Because it's a special occasion. Now, when would you normally have alcohol on a special occasion? Something happened along the way that we decided that we're adults and we could do whatever we want, whenever we want, however we want. And that includes drinking morning, noon, and night. Now imagine that birthday cake. Instead of just having the birthday cake on your birthday or on somebody else's birthday, you started to have a little bit of birthday cake, I don't know, after work. It was a stressful day after all, and you're an adult and you can do whatever you want. So Monday after work, you go and have a little bit of birthday cake. And, and it was a stressful day and you still have a little bit of that birthday cake left over. So while you're preparing dinner, maybe you have a couple of bites of birthday cake. And since we're having dinner, we might as well have a little bit of that birthday cake with dinner because why not? We have birthday cake with dinner. And then it's been, you know, it's been a long day and we want to unwind. So we're going to sit down in front of the couch and we're going to turn on our Netflix or a Hulu or Amazon Prime, watch the news, whatever it is. And we're going to do so with a slice of birthday cake. Now, of course, at the end of the night, we can't sleep unless we have a little bit of birthday cake. And so the cycle starts all over again the next morning when we maybe start to have a little bit of birthday cake with our coffee in the morning. And then we go to lunch the next day during our work break and uh, we have a little bit of birthday cake for lunch. And then, of course, our, we're, we're itching to get out of work. We know that it's going to be five o'clock somewhere. And as soon as we get out of clock, we go somewhere and we have a little bit of birthday cake. Now, it sounds ridiculous. You might say, well, who would have and so much birthday cake. And though there are people that are having a lot of birthday cake, a lot of us were treating alcohol the same way that we might have been in this ridiculous <laughs> birthday cake analogy. And I want to remind you that wherever you are in your sobriety journey, that's the best day to start was yesterday. And the next best day to start is today. We have some very important holidays and some very important milestones coming up. And I want to remind you that the people that are on your team, whether they be in your household, whether they be in your family, whether they be your coworkers. Imagine if a survey had gone around and they got to ask, which version of you would they rather have on their team? The sober version of you or the drunk version of you? When we start to retool our mind and we start to really think about silly things like the birthday cake analogy and start to think about, I don't know, the people around us, it starts to help us to realize that maybe we weren't acting our best. Sometimes it makes us think that maybe we weren't being our best. And maybe it allows us to understand that we were the ones that were limiting ourselves from achieving all the things that we want in life. From having the relationships with our friends, with our family members, with our kids, with our spouses, whoever it is. And I'm willing to bet that the next years of your life can absolutely be the best years of your life. You deserve to have more mental clarity. You deserve to have better health. You deserve for this to be a new year and for it to be a new you. And I want to leave you with a couple of ideas moving forward for this new year to hopefully help you to get to where you want to be. And the first one is ask yourself, am I there yet? It's real simple. For those of you that are still in early sobriety or you found yourselves relapsing or on a detour, ask yourself, Am I there yet? Am I where I want to be? And if the answer is no, then keep going. We always talk about sobriety being a journey and the cross country road trip analogy. If your intention was to go across the country, would you just stop in the middle of the country and then just decide, no, this is it, I'm done. This is just where I live now. You wouldn't do that to yourself. So if you wouldn't do that to yourself on a cross country road trip, don't do it to yourself in your sobriety journey. And speaking of new habits and new years, I want to hear what your new year's resolutions are in the comment section down below. I want to hear what you've got on your plate, what your aspirations are, 
where you hope to be. Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to feel great? Are you trying to string along 30 days of sobriety or maybe six months of sobriety? Whatever it is, I want to hear what your goals are. And also too, I also want to remind you too, just like we keep track of how many days that we've been sober, I also too want to flip the switch in your brain so that you start keeping track of your good behaviors too. One that I recently started doing is even though I exercise regularly, I 30 days ago tomorrow, I will have exercised every single day for the past 30 days. This way it helps for me to create a routine that's a solid foundation for me to start my day from and to create from and to be productive from. And when we know that we can count on ourselves, Waking up in the morning becomes less and less of a daunting, miserable, anxiety-filled, depressing task. And if you agree with that statement, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. All right, I wanna wish you all good luck on your sobriety journey. Don't forget to leave us a comment in the comment section down below, and we will see you in the next video. And in case you were wondering, I'm 29, dot, dot, dot. Again. <laughs> Thank you.